You're listening to Promenade, the community radio magazine on 98.5 CKWR. Promenade began as a project of the Common Studio, originally known as the Multicultural Cinema Club. Filmmaking, local filmmaking especially, was the studio's original field of interest and of service, and the founder, Azam Fukalade, used to run something called the Local Focus Film Festival. That's one of the reasons why we're really glad to see the KW Film Festival, with its emphasis on local regional film production, returning to Waterloo. Daniel McLeod is the prime moving force here. I'll let him tell you about what's happening. This conversation took place over Zoom on Sunday afternoon. Daniel McLeod, welcome to Promenade. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Daniel, I was really pleased to see the notices go up about the 2021 edition of the Kitchener Waterloo Film Festival. The last time I think that there was an, it uh, was when I was still writing my column and I remember calling you up and, and writing about it and all that. It's great to see it back. And I thought we could connect and you could tell our listeners about what the project is to begin with and also what you were adjusting to the circumstances of the, the COVID era for this year. Well, it's great to connect with you again about this. I actually have that article that you wrote about it uh, last time framed in my office. I was just looking at it. So yeah, it's great to be back. The The Kitchen Waterloo Film Festival, uh, the whole point is to bring local filmmakers together, see each other's work, and also connect with uh, national and international films as well. So it's a, it's a real mix. Uh, this year is really focused on the local filmmaker community just because of with this pandemic, there hasn't really been a way for, for us to, to get together and, and to collaborate on, on future films, see what each other is working on. So in order to do that this year, especially during a pandemic, and I, I know I really didn't want to do a virtual festival, I thought, oh, hey, let's do it outside. Let's do a drive-in. And, uh, and all the proceeds this year are going towards um, our local cinema, the Princess Cinema, because I know they were hit really hard uh, with, the, with the pandemic. And we want to keep indie cinema alive. So I thought this would be a great way to kind of bring a lot of, a lot of people together for a good cause. That's a, a, a drive-in. I mean, outside, there, there are various festivals outside. But the drive-in, I thought, was brilliant. <laughs> Especially yeah. this time of year, things start getting... Uh, iffy when it comes to weather and all that, but you're weatherproof. Absolutely. Uh, we hope so, at least. It's a, a gigantic inflatable screen, but they've assured me it's, it's well tied down. It's not going anywhere, rain or shine. Uh, you tune into the radio station, you know, like classic drive-in stuff. So I thought, hey, you know, I don't think we've really had one of these around. I know uh, Bingham's did drive-in stuff for a while, but I wasn't able to to uh, really get a hold of them to, if they're going to do it again. So I thought, oh, we can, we can do it ourselves. Why not? And is the princess supplying the screen? I know they have a rental operation with that. Yeah, their uh, rental operation is run by uh, Jacob Tut, uh, son of John. He works out of the Playhouse Cinema in Hamilton. So I, I'm renting from him. Uh, so all the proceeds are, are going towards that family, strong advocates for, for an indie, indie cinema and theater and uh, I just I think it's really important to do everything we can to keep people like that in business and so they can continue to show show our work and keep that uh, creative spirit and community alive. Yes, John Tutt was on our program uh, in the summer uh, and talked about some of the ways they've been trying to get weather in the the, all the challenges, et cetera. And they've been so generous. I mean, one of the reasons I'm interested in KW, uh, film festival is that it kind of carries on from what the Multicultural Cinema Club used to do when Azam was here with the local focus film festival. And the last time uh, I tried to do that, it was the princess was really, really generous. I mean, they gave us the space and they were supportive and publicized it and all that. And it's just great to see people from the community giving back. Uh, and yeah. It's, it's important, I, I think, and it really is the full community gamut, a uh, range, I think, with this. We have filmmakers attending or submissions from, I think, the youngest is 14 years old, like a high school student, and we have people who have are doing this for their careers. So we have people just starting out, 
we have people who've been, yeah, like, like I said, like some are in their 60s or 70s, and we're all going to be able to come together and, and just you get to see, like literally see that progression of skill and people who stick with it. And people hopefully can uh, become mentors for each other. Uh, we uh, Multicultural uh, and uh, multi-gender was important to me for the lineup as well. Uh, one of the first uh, films we're going to be screening is uh, Stories from Landback Camp, which uh, Aboriginal uh, filmmakers. And it's just the, the, the variety of stories that you get from, from all these different cultures coming together that we can all share, I think, is, is really going to appeal to a, to a large audience. It, it, it's important, I think. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a good time. And these kinds of programs are great because it's just such a variety. There's all kinds of things. And it's people that are in our community making these things. And you see exactly. familiar landmarks, et cetera, people you know, uh, but you don't know what's going to come next, uh, depending on how you set it up. But it can be a real uh, a variety. It's just fascinating what, what the kind of things people come up with. Oh, yeah. We have over, there's over four hours of, of short films we're going to be doing. It's in two blocks in the same night. So the first couple of hours are more a general audience focus, something the whole family can enjoy. And then there'll be a break, about 10 minutes. So people can use a washroom, uh, grab some snacks, whatever. And the second break is more like 14A, more mature audience. I didn't want to, uh, I never want to censor anyone or say, oh, your film doesn't belong here. I think, I think all films belong here. It's just wanted to give people the opportunity, like if you have small kids, that might be the time to take them out, but we still want to show, show people's films, no matter what. That's a good way to do it. Absolutely. And people can sit through the whole thing and have a, yeah. and really immerse themselves in a, a festival or go to one or the other. Exactly. And I also saw people can bring their own food if they like, but there's also yeah. going to be snacks, et cetera, available. Yes, uh, at the moment we're working with uh, our screen vendor um, to set up a page for pre-ordering snacks. So I think those will be coming from uh, the princess. And um, if that's not up in time, because this festival was put together in such extremely short notice, just with, especially like the city of Waterloo donated the space, which was really generous to them, but coordinating the logistics of that was fairly down to the wire and we didn't want to wait until the winter time to do this. So if people aren't able to pre-order their food in time, I think we'll, we'll have someone there uh, just for cash for like candy and, and pop and stuff. Like sure, that. okay. And it's up in, uh, off Dutton Drive, right? By the 404. Yeah. It's a 404 lot, I think it's called. Yeah, it's a 510 Dutton Drive. And uh, we were really lucky because the city had has done drive-ins there uh, throughout the summer. So they know exactly where everything goes. And uh, they've been very helpful. They even provide me a little map of where you put cars and where everything's going to be set up. So we've been very fortunate to have the, the support of the city of Waterloo. Uh, really, everyone's just happy to come together and to help out. It really shows off, I think, the, the giving community that we have here. And I think a lot of ways, less lost sight of during during this lockdown because you don't get to interact uh during a pandemic like you could before and it's harder to see the the good sides in people uh, but putting this together and everyone's generosity has been uh, heartwarming i'm glad you said that because earlier tonight um uh, uh, pam patel from uh, empty space is on our show and, and she particularly had good things to say about city of kitchener because they're doing their thing at the market and it's the same, she said she'd never seen that kind of support and concern and understanding. And that's good to hear. People should be able to know that uh, that's part of how we're weathering all this too, besides the people throwing stones and, and uh, <laughs> blocking hospitals and all that. I know, there, there's always gonna be people like that. And it, unfortunately, they're the ones who get the most news time because it's sensational, but that definitely does not represent the majority and I, the majority have absolutely been wonderful. Okay, well, I hope it all goes swimmingly and uh, come back and tell us how it went. And also you, you mentioned before we went on the air, uh, you have a film project of your own. Maybe you'd like to come in and we can talk about it. I would love to, uh, at a later date, I actually will be showing uh, a teaser trailer for it uh, at the, at the uh, festival this coming Friday. So if you wanna see that early, uh, 
come on out and see that and uh, 25 other films. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. So there you have it. A drive-in jamboree with four plus hours of film separated into two blocks with a 10-minute break in between. The first block starts at 7.45, the second at 10 p.m., and people are welcome to stay for both blocks. However, if you have young children, it's recommended that they do not view the second block of films due to some of their subject matter. You can stay in your car, or you can watch on the grass if you bring a lawn chair. If you do that, dress warmly and bring a smartphone with a radio app and a set of headphones. Please arrive by 7.30 to secure your spot. Uh, you can bring your own food and drink as well, but popcorn, snacks, drinks, etc. can be pre-ordered. And all proceeds go directly to supporting the Princess Cinema.